Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Brutal Execution of Sir Walter Raleigh, Elizabeth I's favourite. Now, Sir Walter Raleigh was one of the most famous people inside of Tudor England. He was very well thought of as a member of Elizabeth I's court, and he wore many different hats. He was a writer, spy, politician, explorer and courtier, and is best remembered today for bringing a number of luxuries to England, such as tobacco. Raleigh is also a man who would explore around the world and who set up the first colonies in North America. He even named Virginia after his queen, after being given a royal patent to explore the region. Despite his colonies failing, with a failed mission to Rakanu Island still being questionable today, what cannot be disputed is the fact he was close with Elizabeth I. He was a man who did, despite his high position at court, suffer an execution following the death of Elizabeth when his popularity fell. Sir Walter Raleigh was born around 1552 into a very Protestant family. As a young child, his family got into trouble a number of times with Bloody Mary I, as she was persecuting Protestants. She returned the country to Catholicism, and to avoid execution, his father had to hide a number of times. Raleigh then hated Catholicism because of the persecutions and suffering, and at the age of around 17, he left to go and serve in the French Civil Wars. He returned and went to Oxford University, but left without a degree. He left once again to go and fight at the French battles before coming back to England around 1575. But his career inside of the military would lead to Elizabeth I's eye becoming captured by Raleigh. In Ireland, he was involved in suppressing the Desmond Rebellions, and he led a group of soldiers at the Siege of Smerwick that were involved in executing around roughly 600 Spanish and Italian soldiers. In Ireland, he became very rich and conquered much land and was given significant wealth from this. He was rewarded by the Queen with more estates for his service, and he became close with her. She continued to reward Raleigh, and he became one of her favourites. Eventually, he was invited to court, and whilst here he captured the Queen's eye, and was known for being a perfect gentleman. There was one incident whilst he was walking with the Queen in a garden, and she was about to walk across a puddle. Raleigh laid down his cloak so Elizabeth could walk over it. But Raleigh is best remembered today for his attempts at exploration and his attempts to colonise parts of the world for the Queen and for England. He was granted a royal charter that gave him permission and backing to colonise those islands and people who were considered heathens and barbarous. Any lands that were not possessed by a Christian ruler or not lived in by Christians were up for grabs. The point of exploration was for Raleigh to make the Queen richer from the unexplored lands and territories and that bases could be created to attack the Spanish from. The Spanish were considered the greatest enemy of the English and the colonies could have allowed raids. Despite never personally visiting North America, Raleigh did try to send expeditions there, which were funded by himself and also his wealthy friends. They were never really hugely successful in raising funds for the Queen, but despite this, he was knighted, and Raleigh then became a member of Parliament. Around this time, he also ordered a ship to be built, this ship was going to be called the Ark Raleigh, but it was brought from him by Elizabeth and the Crown and renamed the Ark Royal. This was one of the most important ships in defending England against the Spanish Armada. It was used in a number of raids against the Spanish and served well in the Navy. Raleigh was involved in defeating the Spanish Armada and defending England, and he continued to be in favour of Elizabeth. He was given more lands and houses in 1592 and became the captain of the Yeoman of the Guard. However, Raleigh quickly fell from favour through his marriage to a woman who Elizabeth was close with. He married in secret Bess Throckmorton, a close lady-in-waiting of the Queen, and she then became pregnant. Their son was born in March of 1592, but would die a year later after catching the plague. But when Queen Elizabeth found out about the marriage and child, she was raging. She forced Raleigh to be sent to the Tower of London, along with his wife, and Bess was banished from court. Raleigh did later leave the Tower, but was banished from court for six years. To try and win favour again with the Queen, 
Raleigh embarked on more explorations and tried to find the mystical land of El Dorado, which was allegedly full of gold. He believed it was real, and he travelled to Guana, where he did come across gold mines but could not colonise the area. He continued to fight the Spanish Armada, and did return to court in 1597. He stayed close with the Queen until her death, but after James I's ascension onto the throne, things went very badly. Elizabeth I died on the 25th of March 1603, and when James I came onto the throne, Sir Walter Raleigh was thrown into the Tower of London. He was charged with treason and for being involved in a plot to remove James from the throne. The plan would have seen James being replaced with Lady Arabella Stuart, and Raleigh's trial began in the November of 1603. He defended himself and argued that the evidence against him was based upon gossip. He was convicted, but James I spared him his life, and whilst held inside the Tower of London, he wrote a book entitled The History of the World, and he wrote many works based on the ancient world. He stayed inside the tower for 13 years, and was allowed to grow plants in a garden inside of the tower. He also mixed potions and herbal medicines, and he was then allowed to go on another expedition to look for El Dorado. But during the mission, a group of his soldiers, under command of Raleigh's friends, attacked the Spanish at an outpost which caused big problems. This threatened peace between England and Spain, and one part of the pardon he had been given by the king was that he should not have fought with the Spanish and threatened peace. Raleigh's own son was killed during the engagements, and James then had to smooth things over with the Spanish, but Raleigh still was motivated by his Catholic hatred, and opposed the Spanish expanding in South America. It was said that James's hand had been forced by the Spanish, and he did not like Raleigh as much as Elizabeth I did. He was sent to prison to await his death, accused of waging war deliberately against the Spanish, and James I had to agree. On the 29th of October 1618, Sir Walter Raleigh was taken from the Tower of London to the Palace of Westminster, next to Westminster Abbey at 8am. He was escorted by armed pikemen and was dressed in a black nightgown. The crowd was huge that day to witness the execution of Sir Walter Raleigh, and the guards had to force their way through the crowd to a scaffold that had been created overnight for Sir Walter Raleigh's execution. Raleigh requested that he should be killed in public so he could speak to people, and this was agreed, but the king was worried about what he would say. It was believed that the Lord Mayor's pageant, which would happen on the same day, would bring the crowd away, but this didn't happen. Raleigh had a huge crowd, and many noblemen even attended with their horses to get a good view, and many stood from balconies. He was accompanied by the Dean of Westminster and two sheriffs of London, and he then spoke out to the crowd, he said, I was yesterday taken out of my bed in a strong fit of fever, which hath much weakened me, and whose untimeliness for bearing no occasion nor place, I likewise expect today. I do therefore first desire the Almighty God to keep sickness from me, that I may have time to deliver my mind. Raleigh was speaking, and the crowd was so big that not everyone could hear, he thanked God and said, He hath brought me into the light to die before the eyes of so many honourable and worthy personages, and that he hath not suffered me to die in obscurity in the dark prison of the tower, where for the space of fourteen years together I have been oppressed with many miseries and have suffered much affliction and sickness. For 25 minutes Raleigh spoke, and he claimed his loyalty to James I and to England. He was even offered to go and get warm by a fire as he was speaking so long, and he refused to do this, and did not wish to appear weak. He prayed with the crowd and said, Being a man full of veneer who has lived a sinful life in such callings, I have been a seafaring man, a soldier and courtier, and in the temptations the last of these is enough to overthrow a good mine and a good man. His final words to the nobility who gathered there were, I have a long journey to go, therefore I must take my leave of you. The time was ready for one of the final members of the Tudor aristocracy to make his final journey. The scaffold was cleared and then Raleigh remained in prayer before he took off his nightgown to prepare for his execution. He asked to see the axe, and this was shown to him from under the executioner's cloak. He said, This is a sharp medicine. 
but it is a sure cure for all diseases. The executioner was given his forgiveness and Raleigh was offered a blindfold and he refused this. He then looked towards the block and stretched himself over it. His neck was then placed and adjusted on the block by the executioner, who ripped his shirt and waistcoat, to make sure no material got caught when the axe fell. Raleigh then stretched his hands out, giving the executioner the signal to strike, but he hesitated in front of the crowd, and Raleigh said, What dost thou fear? Strike, man, strike. His head was taken off with two blows, and it was said his lips still quivered once the head was taken off. The executioner then held it up to the crowd, and his head was placed in a red bag and then wrapped in a nightgown. It was taken away to a mourning coach drawn by two white horses, and as the crowd left, his body remains on the scaffold. His head was then embalmed and given to his wife, with his body being buried in St Margaret's Church in Westminster. His wife allegedly kept the head with her for years, and it was kept in the bag until it was then buried with his body in the church in Westminster. When the axe swung and fell, the life of one of the most famous Tudor explorers and courtiers was over. Sir Walter Raleigh's life was incredible, and he was involved in many different scandals and explorations over the years. His execution, ordered by James I, was seen as controversial, and it's believed his death was seen as James enforcing his rule over the country. His final speech was a long address, and he wished to speak to the crowd to talk at length about his life. His execution was incredibly bloody, but was just another chapter in the incredible life of Sir Walter Raleigh. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.